Hi, nice to see so many of you here. So this is Maintaining Momentum, Keeping a Collaborative Digital Project Alive and Kicking. So the Prow website was launched at the National Digital Forum in 2009. Little did I think that I would be presenting now, six years later. The site is almost a grand old lady of a similar vintage as Teara. The website was the result of a successful bid for project funding from the government's Digital Community Partnership Fund, which paid for the development and establishment of the site. This presentation is about how a group of relatively small organisations has managed to keep a digital project alive and kicking a project which, some, which sits somewhat outside core business. This paper tells the story of the site, why it is what it is today, and how it has survived. And the presentation will loosely cover this. And those are hopefully not too many bullet points. OK, so what is the PROW? And that's what it is for those who aren't familiar with it. So the PROW is a website which celebrates, preserves and makes accessible the unique history and culture of the top of the South Island by showcasing articles which encompass the anecdotes, stories and memories of our residents. The Māori name for the top of the South Island is Te Tauihu Ute Waka o Māi. Te, te Tauihu was the prow of Māui's waka or canoe from which he fished up the North Island, hence the name of the site, the PROW. The site was the brainchild of the heritage librarians at Nelson City and Tasman District Councils who saw a need for a central repository for sources of information about local stories which were constantly being requested or researched, sources which were scattered and not easy to find. A storehouse of bibliographies would not excite anyone apart from librarians, nor would it excite funders. So as a front end to the bibliographies, the final bid for funding was for a regional collaborative venture that will present short, well-researched local stories or articles with a full bibliography to allow further research plus images. So an attractive front end for the working tools that we wanted to use and make accessible for others. The project has always been a collaborative one and the funding bid was supported by Nelson City, Tasman and Marlborough District Libraries and Councils, Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology and the Nelson Provincial Museum. It has also received support from regional museums such as the Marlborough Museums and the initial bid for funding and site concept was strongly supported by local schools and historical societies. The website was developed locally using Silver Stripe as the platform which was relatively new to market at that stage but offered what we wanted with a bit of customization not a good thing in retrospect. What we ended up with was a site which was made up of pages of interlinked articles or stories. Each page has a standard template which presents an article with captioned and properly referenced images, sources, then further sources by format. Having an interactive site which engaged its audience was always important to us. And this is why we asked our developers to customise the early version of Silverstripe. There is a moderated comment, comment feature on each article page, a map feature to locate each story geographically, and a user add a story feature. Stories are organized by theme, but can also be found by site search, the mapping feature, or a timeline. So those can all be seen on that page. And this is an article page with a range of images and links. And then the bit underneath are the sources, related stories, <coughs> and it goes on. OK, so take that back. So who uses it and how, and has it been successful? The website has had relatively high use, and this has grown over time. Comparing year one to year six, users have grown 172% and sessions 157%. We had 168,000 page views last year. The number of stories has grown too, from the original 50 to 460. We get reasonably active engagement from the community, approximately two significant comments a month. We get a lot of insignificant comments as well. A good example of the type of interaction is a recent comment on a story contributed by one of our local researchers on John Rob Ribbit of Hope Junction, a well-known hotelier and community figure in the mid-19th century. And this is that comment where somebody in Ireland has discovered what happened to their ancestor, Percival, which I thought was lovely. We get quite a few of those where people discover things. 
So, we have made some family historians happy. The comments also elicit information inquiries, for example, a request for the specifications of the SS Littleton and corrections to or additional information about a story, for example, about local schools. We had a comment on Victory School. A new primary school was opened in 1948, located on Vanguard Street. It was soon closed to complete construction and reopened in 1949. In this interval, pupils were accommodated at a small church further down Vanguard Street, nearer to Victory Park. Victory School took pressure off Hamden Street and more recently celebrated its 50th, 500th, 50th anniversary. So that was a comment, very factual and properly referenced as well. And we get stories contributed, emailed if not always loaded onto the site. The Prow has high recognition from local researchers, museums, historic societies and others and has been used frequently by the local media as a source. And a Prow story was even referenced in an online discussion about the Red Peak design, which was interesting. <laughs> a hard audience to engage is young people and students when there are so many sources of information out there. But I believe it is well used by students of all ages when they want information about the region. And this is partly because the Prow makes it easy for them to find information. With a huge volume of digitised material now available, the site helps students to navigate through that information and find what is relevant to them and the story they are researching. It locates specific information from a range of sources and makes them aware of where they can go for more information. And how do I know it's used by students? Usage figures definitely decreased during the school holidays. And when I recently spoke to a number of classes of history students doing NCEA assignments on a local history subject to their choice, the overwhelming response was, the prow? Yeah, know about that. What more can you ask? So I've spoken about successes, now about some challenges, some of which have been, as you see, staff resource, management, vision and goals, maintaining enthusiasm engagement, keeping it fresh, and look and feel. Should we maintain a known brand or try something new? Some of these I'll address. In the first years of the site's history, we added content by commissioning and accepting stories which provided a balanced overview of the region, geographically, by time, and across our themes. The main question then became how to manage and maintain the site into the future. Should we continue to grow the site and add more stories, or should we just maintain the core we had? This was something our original vision statement did not tell us. If we were to grow, and even if we maintained what we had, we had to determine who was managing the site and how and pay for hosting and maintenance. I just picked some pictures up now just to give you a change. So what happened for us was almost by default, but was possible because the project was a collaborative venture with a presence beyond any one institution, this, and one which had gained momentum and support from the community. The small steering group made up, a made up of representatives of the regional libraries and museum has continued to loosely manage the site and has allowed it to grow organically, accepting and commissioning stories, upgrading the site as needed, and supporting the initiatives which have kept the site fresh and engaged the community. Again, by default, as I was the initial project manager, I continue to manage the site with input from colleagues at Tasman District Libraries and Joyce Stevens, who's our contract writer. Two of the original group, Cathy Vaughan of Tasman District Libraries and Susan Price of Nelson Public Libraries, have retired, and I miss their support. However, we get continued support from the Nelson Provincial Museum and the Marlborough Museum in the provision of photographs and research assistance for our commissioned stories as requested. There is a budget line from Nelson City Council for commissioned stories, approximately five a year, site maintenance and development, and initially hosting. But this doesn't include staff time. To begin with, Tasman District Council paid for stories and contributed staff time for working on the site. The major contribution from the council is now the provision of hosting facilities. The local firm which developed the site used to provide hosting, but the major CMS upgrade required we move to direct management of the site by Silverstripe. This upgrade also required a move to a Silverstripe compatible server. Tasman District Council host at no direct cost to the site, also providing the necessary maintenance, which is part of that hosting responsibility. The Marlborough District Libraries continue to fund up to six stories a year, and the Nelson Provincial Museum continues to provide images and some research work for the site. Time is possibly the major issue. I have no specific time allocated for prow work. It tends to be the work I do when I have nothing else urgent to work on, or I want something routine to work on. So I add or edit a story, editing text, adding links and images, developing bibliographies, all fairly straightforward. 
Most of my proud time is spent checking and moderating comments, checking, editing and loading stories or updating stories with new sources or revisions. All stories are edited and improved with images, in-text links and source references. Accuracy and authority remain important. To reduce workloads, we have loose reporting responsibilities and targets for the site. I produce quarterly reports which document additional content, expenditure and usage, management and reporting are kept relatively low maintenance. There are no major demands made on contributing organisational time or budgets. The site flies under the radar as a good-to-have small project. So, a little on platform content and changes and how we have kept it fresh. The original customised Silverstripe platform, customised to allow comments user adding a story feature and image holders to allow better captioning, served us well for five years, but eventually had to be upgraded to ensure that the site remained, remained robust and stable. For anyone embarking on a new website, just a tip, keep customisation to a minimum, just to say that the most stressful and expensive part of the upgrade was probably debugging the customisations. The look and feel of the site has changed little over time, this has been deliberate, to maintain a clean, recognisable brand for a local audience that is possibly older and less receptive to change. It has also been seen as important to grow the content, however, to reflect what people ask about, what is topical or of current interest, and to ensure that we provide stories from across the region and also embrace as many Māori stories as possible. To this end, we commission approximately five stories a year from our original writer, Joy Stevens. Joy has proved an invaluable asset, as she is also a publicist and with a vested interest in the site, which is rich with her stories, she does a huge amount of publicity for work for, work for the prow at no cost, just through her contacts, writing, social media outlets and so on. In the first few years, she arranged for the Nelson Mail and Marlborough Express to publish prow stories under our logo on a regular basis, just as we have published some of their stories. And that's one of them. Another tip, develop local advocates who have a commitment to your project. As already stated, we get a steady stream of articles from local historians and a few from the general community. In addition, we get a lot of content from the Heritage Advisor at Nelson City Council. Every heritage activity, plaque and storyboard has research and stories associated with them, and the Prow acts as a repository for those stories. The site has been recognised as a council asset. To a lesser extent, we also get similar content from Tasman District Council, stories from their heritage plaques, which we add to with references and further sources. It's also been recognised as important to develop relationships with other publications. We have standing agreement that we can put local history stories from the Nelson Mail, Nelson Historical Society Newsletter, Golden Bay Weekly, Wild Tomato, etc., onto the prowl with suitable attribution. This means that we can be a one-stop shop and repository for local heritage stories from across the region, gathering stories which may otherwise be dispersed and lost. Getting Māori content is a challenge. Initially, we approached local researchers and writers, Hilary and John Mitchell, who at that time had cross-iwi approval for their work to write a core cool set of stories. This collection or theme has not grown much. With eight iwi in the top of the south, it is difficult to determine which story to tell and who should tell it, and perhaps reflects a view that the iwi stories should be presented in their own way and on their own site not on a site which presents the stories of an area which is defined by the boundaries of the original Nelson province established post-settlement. Post this issue is not easily resolved. A key feature of the original project was that it was a collaborative venture. Maintaining that collaborative approach has allowed the site to continue to flourish, dispersing, resourcing across the region. So how have we managed to keep it fresh, attractive and engaging when we haven't really changed a lot? It's been challenging. So we maintain the original look and feel, which appeared to work well if it ain't broke, but we have worked hard to maintain engagement. So what have we done? Well, we've made a responsive web design, so it looks good on tablets and phones. We have not developed an app, partly, because of, partly a resourcing issue and partly because the site is about authoritative content and the bibliographies, which might get lost within an app, and it are important to us. But others have used the content to create apps, and more on that later. We've partnered with Digital New Zealand so that our stories can be found through the Digital New Zealand portal alongside other, other digitised New Zealand content. The home page isn't static. It has a story of the day feature, a random story is selected, or we can determine the story of the day. And latest comments and recent stories are also featured. As a news and views feature, we have a Twitter feed 
while we decided not to create a Facebook page, which would be another site to maintain within our limited time resource, the Twitter presence has allowed some social media engagement, as well as allowing us to feed comments and reflect on local issues onto the home page. And the website is harvested by Top of the South Maps, itself a collaborative project, Nelson and Tasman's GIS mapping service, providing regional maps for planning, property information, services and recreation across the region. On the recreation layer, Prow stories are located with the flag, which is the pink one, um, with a link through to the relevant stories. We talk to local schools about the site and encourage any research on local history stories to be submitted to the site. We have had a number of excellent contributions, particularly from Nelson College for Girls, and it's good, to see, and this, and it's good for the students to see their work published. There's the Heart app, an, innov an innovative NMIT student developer developed this Heritage Augmented Reality app in 2013 using Prow Stories and the museum's heritage images. The app uses three-dimensional scene recognition technology to share stories and information about Nelson's formative years in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The project, which won a substantial grant from New Zealand on Air Digital Media Fund, generated significant publicity and local media buzz, which benefited the Prow. We've worked with the Nelson City Council Heritage Advisor to put the content of heritage plaques onto the prow, as I've already said, and she has also developed heritage walks, some with audio, and we've put these up onto the prow using SoundCloud with downloadable maps. Recently, we extended this to put up the stories behind the murals on the various mural and artwork trails around Nelson City. The prow has become the key resource for recording and promoting Nelson City Council's heritage work. And there have been some community projects. This year, the Marlborough District Libraries funded Joy Stevens to develop a pilot project with the Havelock Museum Society, which had recently developed the Havelock Museum and were keen to start gathering social history stories for a future project. It was felt that this could be a new area for the proud to explore, the historical stories and memories of the people still alive. Two workshops were held in Havelock, aimed at teaching locals how to identify good stories and interview subjects, carry out interviews, as well as research, record and write stories. The project had mixed results in that to date there are only stories in the pipeline from people who attended the workshop. However, we gathered two excellent stories through a dummy interview and there are more stories on the way. And we are reaching youth. The Nelson Youth Council recently decided to run a photo competition where the photo had to be inspired by or illustrate a proud story. This was very pleasing as the youth themselves unprompted came up with this theme. A number of very creative photos came out of the competition and they'll be exhibited during Nelson's Heritage Week in 2016. So where are we? Some more pictures. <laughs> the future and some learning or, cl or conclusions for sustainability. So what's worked for us? Content has been king. The site has always been about content rather than looks. We decided against the developer's desire for some flash iconography on the homepage on setup. I'm glad we did with Flash's recent vulnerability problems. The technology has always been a tool to showcase the content, not WYSI technology for its own sake. We have kept it simple. Many of our target audience are not natural technology users, possibly. It's for them that we have maintained a simple and consistent interface. We've continued to engage students and younger researchers because the content is seen as authoritative. It is seen as a valuable research tool and recommended and referred to by teachers. The Prowl, yeah, I know about that. We have kept it realistic. We have tried not to be too ambitious. We have not developed our own app. We have not developed a Facebook page and we've kept the site relatively simple. We know we do not have a lot of resource to throw at the project to continue and excite and expire. Staff time is limited. So as we've already said, we are more concerned about good content. Collaboration. We've retained a collaborative approach. The site is seen as a good thing for the region and no one organization has sole responsibility for the site. Politically, it's beneficial to keep it going. A good example of local organizations working together. And this is also beneficial for any future funding application we may consider. And it's a repository. The site has gathered new stories from across the region from a range of sources. We do not just create our own. These may be from published sources, for example, the Nelson Mail or ephemeral newsletters. In this way, the regional and subject coverage has grown organically and it is owned by the region. 
interactivity and engagement. The site has always been interactive and has aimed to engage with its comment and added story features. During the life of the site, we have tried a number of engagement activities as well, Twitter, quizzes, a newsletter, writing projects with schools, etc., which have been relatively successful. And we have champions. We have a handful of people in the community who champion the site for us. Joy Stevens, our writer, the museum, the Nelson City Council Heritage Advisor, local researchers, and more, and so many of these regularly supply us with new stories. They keep the site alive and important for others. And we have made finding information easier. The site fulfills its aim of helping people find authoritative content or information about local stories by gathering source material in one place. Finding the right information on papers past or through Digital New Zealand can be difficult as there is so much stuff there and the metadata on the source material doesn't always allow refined searching. We try to surface the important source material for our local stories. So what next? I'm not sure. The challenges for the future are to continue to engage and grow our audiences, gather new content and maintain what's already there. Our key target audiences remain local historians and genealogists. They are generally older, so we need to keep the usability of the site simple. And school students, digital natives for whom we need to keep the site interesting and relevant. And there is potential to grow the site as a source of information for tourists and visitors to the top of the south. Whatever we do, however, we need to keep our aims and commitment realistic and not try to do what we cannot maintain. We are happy to be known as a reliable and authoritative source of information about the top of the south rather than a piece of whizzy technology. It would be good to be here in another five years. And this is just an overview of what we learned. Thank you. Hi. Um, first, um, congratulations on your site. I um, refer to it quite a lot, and I enjoy it. Um, I had a question about. Um, whoa, I had a question about uh, the community contributions that you get, um, uh, because the quality of the stories in your sites are pretty consistent and good. So I'm quite curious uh, how much was user contributions, how much time and effort you spend on editing and adding to it. Uh, what kind of turnaround there is, and also do you reject user contributions? Do you have a kind of bar, a quality bar? There are some user contributions we've rejected. Partly we've had things that are perhaps just advertising for a particular um, by a company or whatever. With some of the student contributions, then we take the best, so we usually get the batches of them, and I usually take the best of them, and then we talk to the students about what works and what doesn't. And we, 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 use, we have done workshops with each of the schools about how you research, how you reference, looking for you know, quality information, taking them across that, and that, the referencing part. We often put the bibliographies on the end ourselves, partly because if it's a story that isn't there, then it's useful for us to actually have that information because then we can say when people come to the information desk at any of the libraries, um, if they want information about this story, then you don't have to kind of start that whole research process again. It's our repository to say, go here, look at these, come back if you need more. And it's um, highlighting those. Um, and I do do, we do do some editing on stories that don't make so if the, the English doesn't make sense then yes we sort of lightly edit it so that does take a bit of time but actually a lot of the contribution is from hist historical researchers at, who produce really good content um, or it's taken from things that are published elsewhere which is actually really beneficial because all the news the historical society newsletters even um, articles on the Nelson Mail or wherever they're kind of just out there and they've gone and you can find them if you know they're there, but if we capture them and put them here, then people know that that's, that's sort of where they are. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Nicola, Hi. thank you very much. Um, love the way that you're so wise about remaining true to your <laughs> purpose. Thank you. Good reminder for all of us. Um, did you find that, uh, I know it's not about technology, it's about the content, but of course technology is the, the means by which that content is um, shared um, and maintained. Did you notice a, um, uh, an impact when you started um, sharing content on Digital New Zealand? Um, 
I'm not sure, actually, because that was done quite early on in the life cycle of the site, so it's difficult to know whether the kind of increase was because of that or whether it was happening anyway. So it's actually difficult to know. And, you, and it's actually difficult to pull out from Google Analytics whether, whether people are coming from there or not, or, or perhaps it's something I haven't done and I could do. So I'm not sure, to be honest. Mm. Can I ask another question? Is that OK? Um, so um, at some point, I imagine you will need to be migrating to a new system. Um, have you had any thoughts about that and what it might look like? Or have you had any sort of technology mm. dreams about something whizzy maybe that could really add value? Not really, no. We've, um, we've just upgraded to the latest version of Silverstripe, which worked OK. Um, so, and because I've spent so long debugging and making it work again, I'm really reluctant to do something else. So I don't, I don't know. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't actually digitize and, and have to store material up there. So it is simply a website which has links to lots of other places. The, the images that are there are kind of they're stored temporarily on there, but, they're, but a lot of them are kind of poured in from elsewhere. So we don't have to kind of think about um, sort of storing original content. So this kind of works at the moment, and I would imagine that Silver Stripe's going to remain relatively robust for a while, who knows? Um, so we'll kind of, leave. perhaps it'll be someone who takes off over from me can go down that route. Mm. Anyone else? I was just going to ask, what sort of visitation do you get to print? Uh, well, I have the, well, it's 168,000 page views yep. this last year. Um, so it's sort of it's grown. I can, I'm never good at, good at remembering figures. I should have written them all down, but um, it's it's sort of relatively high. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Um, yeah. Thanks very much. Nicole. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.